the, the D-type, but I suppose it's what re really got me started into this Akuria Koss collection. I was very interested in motor racing and uh, managed to get a trip or two to Silverstone when, when I was a schoolboy. And it was there really where uh, I came across a courier Koss. And there was usually quite a lot of excitement when the, um, when the Scots boys were driving because they were very aggressive drivers. And uh, the color of the cars, you know, the uh, flag metallic blue as it's called, uh, was a very evocative colour and really stood out against the, the generally the British racing green of uh, the other Jaguars. The XK120, she is a fairly standard uh, steel-bodied 120, but the thing that makes her very special, as far as we know, she's the only survivor out of the three initial um, XK120s that formed the Akuria Koss team in 1951. She, she was, of course, privately owned, like all three of them, the XKs were. And um, her owner, Sir James Scott Douglas, a uh, very, very tall and very large fellow, and he, he seemed to get into the XK120 okay. It must have been pretty tight, I think. But um, he had some remarkable success over about an 18-month period in driving for, for Akuria Koss. Tremendous racing history, probably one of the most raced, I guess, XK120s. The C-Type Jaguar, or sometimes as I referred to her as the other lady in my life. <laughs> it was initially bought by Ninian Sanderson's father, Bob Sanderson, for Ninian to drive for a courier cost, and that's what happened. So. Uh, Ninian was the, 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 the driver that drove that car um, probably more than any other driver at the time, although there were quite a number of notable drivers that did drive this car, including, you know, uh, Jackie Stewart's brother, Jimmy. Yes, the D-Type was one of the last short-nose D-Types, and I think was the last short-nose D-Type to be acquired by a courier Koss. And that was in, in very early 1956 and was used somewhat sparingly by a career cost, although it, it had considerable success on the race circuits during 1956. That car had been in one ownership, I think, from the early 60s right the way through to the middle 90s. I tried to buy it in that form because I think it had been garaged for some 20 odd years. Um, and I thought I was going to be successful, but unfortunately, uh, I wasn't successful in acquired at that time. After the D types had become somewhat dated and non-competitive, David Murray committed to um, a designer, John Tadiero, to design him a number of cars that would make them competitive again. But this particular car was probably the last of the Tijeros in front engine form that was done for a courier cost. And it was in 1959 this car was built. And as they all were, they were built in a hurry and were always late. It competed in two races. It competed in, at Le Mans in 1959, uh, running with a three liter Jaguar engine. In fact, a three liter engine made out of a uh, a Jaguar 2.4 type type engine, short stroke engine. The car ran surprisingly well for quite a period. Uh, um, I think sort of nine or ten hours it ran, and it was placed in in certainly the top six for quite a while at Le Mans. But eventually the engine failed. The the Tajira Jaguar was entered for the Goodwood TT in 1959 with two drivers. Um, Maston Gregory, the American, who um, by then had made quite a name for himself as a sports car driver, and um, a young driver called Jim Clark. I think Clark did the first session. Gregory took over, suffered either some mechanical failure or something at, at Woodcut, and, and the car was involved in a massive accident. It was subsequently rebuilt with a spare space frame 
chassis that had originally been built. The intention was to have two cars, but two cars were never built. Yeah, the Ikaria Cost Cooper Monaco was initially bought as a kit from Coopers and a courier cost and Stam's Broke mainly, I think, uh, built it into a car and they took it straight to, to Le Mans with Bruce Halford to drive it. Um, the car went reasonably well, but the conditions in the race were pretty bad and uh, very heavy rain and uh, Bruce had difficulty in seeing and went off and uh, did a lot of damage to the car uh, and some damage to himself, unfortunately. That was it, its first outing. It was brought back uh, to Edinburgh, rebuilt, and then entered in quite a sequence of uh, local races in the UK when Tommy Dixon drove the car and drove it very, very successfully. Jackie Stewart won quite a lot of races with the car. The, the, the Sprite is fundamentally a Sebring Sprite that first ran at Sebring and then came back from Sebring and was modified with a, this rather attractive hardtop. My old hero, Ninian Sanderson, <laughs> and a young driver called Bill Mackay were assigned to drive it at Le Mans in 1961. The car got through scrotineering. I think there was some difficulty because of the Sprite's pretty low and uh, there was some difficulty, but they eventually got through scrutineering at the Mans and the, and the car ran. Uh, Ninian did the first session with the car and when he brought it in, it was raining cats and dogs. And unfortunately, on the first lap, Bill rolled the car. It virtually uh, destroyed the car. It certainly took the, the very nice aluminium roof off what we got was um, quite a, a collection of, of parts that we were able to build up into what the car looks like today. The car is really a tribute to the last front engine car that a courier cost ran at Le Mans and a, a tribute to some extent to Ninian uh, and Bill Mackay because it was really their last competitive drive for a courier cost. David Murray uh, had sort of committed to John Tagero for his, his design of chassis for uh, Le Mans. And come 1962, David Murray still had ambitions of, uh, of doing well at Le Mans. John Tagero had been experimenting with rear-engined uh, chassis for Formula Juniors. And he came up with a design for a, a GT car with a rear engine. The Courier Cos had the Climax engine and the Cooper gearbox and uh, so they decided to fit the Climax engine and the Cooper gearbox in one of John Sergero's widened uh, Formula Junior type chassis. I think they commissioned William and Pritchard to build a body but somebody else had to do it in the time scale that they had. The transport that a courier cost were using was, was getting a bit long in the tooth and um, through the association they were able to sponsor the building of a, a special purpose car transporter. The responsibility for designing it was given to a, a rather colourful character called Selby Howgate who was with um, Alexander's engineering at Falkirk. He had, he had various attempts at designing this transporter, but he eventually settled on uh, using a comma bus chassis. The advantage of, of using a chassis like that is that the, the engine was compact enough to go in between the chassis members so that you were able to start with a, a complete flat floor. But the specification had been, been drawn up that it must carry three full-size race cars and to be able to carry a full complement of spares and the crew. 
The design that he eventually came up with is quite brilliant. 